taking a look at Bitcoin and its future, what it looks like, where it's going, how it's operating, what are some good areas of interest to look for and all of that fun stuff. Hey, what's up? My name's John Henry. I'm Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. Like I said, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and kind of the, the overall anticipated future or what it holds uh, in store for us or what we can expect. One of the big things that I want to look at when we're talking about Bitcoin is understanding that there are a lot of other coins available too. It's certainly not just Bitcoin. And we'll take a look at a few other options out there. Uh, but Bitcoin is going to be the main focus because it's kind of like if you want to look at the index markets in the US, you look at the SPY, right? The S&P 500, even though it's not the only one, it's the biggest one. And that's what everybody focuses on. Same thing when we're looking at this. Don't forget to smash the like button and let the YouTube algorithm know what's up. Heck, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button too so you don't miss the next video. If you really love what we're bringing to the table and you're looking for a way to get a bit more screen time with us, check out the join button below. YouTube members get to sit in on the VIP room ahead of the New York Stock Exchange Open while we create our plan for the day so you have everything you could possibly need before the opening bell. So jumping in then to Bitcoin and what all is going on here. First off, we have to look at this from the, you know, through the through the lens of realistic expectations here. If we're zooming way, way out, we can see a couple things stand out very, very dramatically. First off, the low is down at 2,817 and the high is at 69,000. That is absolutely bonkers in terms of a, the disparity between the two is just nuts. Now, remember, that's all the way back from, you know, to that, well, back here, September 2017. But if we go a little bit further and we find a chart that gives us a little bit more data, like Poloniex usually does, there we go. We can go back a lot further. You can see this is the one that I looked at as well. And actually, these are all of the uh, the measurements along the way. That's kind of handy. I didn't even realize they were all in there. <clears throat> so we're looking at zones of interest on this uh, in terms of the overall continuation to the upside and comparing it to what's happened so far. And obviously, Bitcoin is doing incredibly well, right? But one thing that we kind of have to pay attention to is while it's growing above this last high, have we had any other scenarios that look similar to this? Remember, the last time we had a pullback, the last pullback from the top to the bottom up here was about 55%. And then if we look back at the pullback before that was from there down to there, which was 85% or 84%. There's a big difference between what we're seeing here. So if we're looking at the overall price structure, then does this peak look like this over here? Well, not really, right? I mean, this this is two, uh, or this is one very obvious point, and then a fun, uh, just <laughs> absolutely flung back to the lows. That's that rotation off 20,000. And then it sank all the way down to the base. Now, after that rotation, when we cycle back up to a new high, we're not seeing the same thing. This isn't a V top. It might have been. But, well, the sellers couldn't complete their objective and the bulls made it another new high. So we've got to look back at what's happened the last time we've seen this, right? What's happened the last time we had a big pullback, but then the market rallied back up and retested itself again. All right, here we go. So I had to go back a little ways, but the last time we had a scenario that was similar to what we're seeing now is back in early 2017 in March. Uh, this is when Bitcoin was hovering at around the 1300s, where we had a really strong rally up, a big pullback down, went a little bit flaggish, and then popped back up to the top. And well, after that rotation, right, you can see what kind of took place. We had the attempted break above the highs, went sideways, pulled back for a little while, and then just didn't stop going higher. That was actually the launching, whoop, that was, jeez, you can't even see it. That was a launching pad to bring, to bring Bitcoin from 890 all the way up to 200, uh, 2,000, rather, 700. So, I mean, that's a gigantic rally to the upside if we're looking for something similar to what's going on now. So if we're looking at the base to the peak of that rally, we're looking at about a 205%. Now, if we compare that to what's going on more recently, we had the rally up, the pullback, and now the continuation phase up where we're kind of going back and forth a little bit. If we go back, that last pullback before the rally, because there was a pullback, it dipped from the peak to the trough about 35%. So there is a 35% pullback preceding the 200% rally to the upside. So let's go along with that move. Have we had a 30% pullback yet? Well, we've had a 15% pullback. We're not even close, right? So what would make a lot of sense here is to see a parative pullback about 35% back down to around 44,000. From there, 
we've got a potential of a, well, we've already looked at it. It's a 200 and, what was it? 205% rally to the upside. <clears throat> so if we're taking this from the low all the way up 205%, that places upside objectives on Bitcoin in the nearer term at around 137,000. This is through the lens of what's to be expected in reality. I mean, there are a lot of upside objectives that range all the way up into the millions. There are some downside objectives that go all the way to zero. There are extreme cases to everything. But looking in terms of parity, what the market has done before when it's done this, that's what we can use to our advantage. The last time it did it, it was a while ago, but the last time it did it, we had a 35% pullback and then followed up with a 205% rally. So it makes a lot of sense then to see a pullback down to around 40, we'll just say 45,000 to make it easier, but it's actually a little bit lower, 44,300. Uh, and then a rally all the way back up to potentially over 100,000. And that could be this pullback that, that we are looking at right now. Now, taking this a step further, there are likely a lot of traders who have been rallying their way back up. Remember, if we put into logarithmic, we can see that this dip all the way down here at 3,800, that's had a really strong rally up and almost no major pullbacks until, well, right here. That's, that's about the first time. So in a bigger perspective, if the market wanted to find a larger dip, we can look at the overall continuation that we've got going on here. First off, the initial rally up was an L2. They continued up into another high, but that was only an L1, and then broke all the way back up. They did pull back to an L1, broke higher again into an L2, and then finally had a deeper dive into the L3, which we have now broken above the highs. So a lot of bulls, when we have that L3 rotation, are going to be looking to try to hold this really aggressively. That means that there is a case to be made for the bulls to be holding right where we are now, 57,000 to 50, well, basically 57,000 to 60,000 as a major zone of support. Now, I don't know about you, um, but this looks like they're not really intending on holding that area right now. Uh, but there is an argument if we do get some type of patterning down here for swing traders to come in for a rotation back up. It's really far up there. I would like to see a bit of a deeper pullback if possible for that measured move. That would get it into the L2s. That would put everything in a picture-perfect spot. Now, if we zoom in a little bit closer here on the daily and look at this most recent rally up to see how the market is responding, we started off with the initial higher low, and that led into a volume node uh, that apparently doesn't want to load up. Okay. I don't know why it doesn't want to load. How about if we go further? There we go. Okay, that was really weird. Uh, starting to take notes from Ninja Trader here. Uh, so we've got that higher low. Let me move it over here. There we go. We've got the POC, which ended up being bottom weighted. Now, if we look at where that POC landed comparative to previous price structure, that would likely dictate to us that these are bulls. Every time it tried to go underneath it, it was a failure. And when it finally did, it was higher low, higher low, rotated back up. So the assumption then is that these are short-term shorts, maybe looking for scalps, arguably they got them, and long-term bulls building into big positions for a huge move to the upside. Well, obviously, I mean, that's that's way down at 33,000. That's, that's a long way away. So if we're looking at that with that kind of, that movement in mind, the nearer term, again, we cycled off of that L5 deep, deep on the pullback. The continuation phase was an L2 perfect exactly what we want to see this next dip was an l3 the next rally up is an l1 that's exactly what we wanted to see they barely made a new high and now they're starting to pull back again this seems much more likely that we get those deep l3 l4s in the near term that are looking for that parity structured around 44,000. now if we're looking at the overall order flow on the entire move to the upside that might paint a little bit of a different picture once it loads up, there we go. The POC is still way down here at 32,000. Yikes. So if the market does start getting some legs and diving to the downside, there is an argument to be made that this extends further down into the lower 32, 33,000 area. That's going to feel catastrophic to a lot of traders because look at what that pullback would be. That's a 50 something percent pullback. Not many Bitcoin traders are going to be too happy with a 50% pullback off the top. But I mean, realistically, if we're looking at what's been going on in parity wise, it makes more sense to see that 44,000 as a zone of support. We just have to play in the contingency side where if it does break through, the next support is until around 33,000. 
Now, again, Bitcoin isn't the only thing that we can talk about. There are a lot of big up and comings. One of them that we've been talking about for a long time. Actually, I've got a, uh, a, a well, I've got it actually marked, but uh, Crypto.com, the Crow token. This is one that is, well, it's seeing explosive growth now, uh, which makes sense given everything that it's bringing to the table. Something really big of interest of Crypto.com is everything that they're offering. Right, One of the big setbacks that we have, because they have an exchange, they have DeFi, they have NFTs, they have an incredibly easy NFT marketplace, they've got earnings, they've got debit cards that earn cash, I mean, they've got it all. But the one big thing that they don't have is access to their exchange in the US. Yet. We just saw that they're being launched on, well, Coinbase. You can buy crypto tokens on, or crypto.com tokens, got to be careful on how we say that, uh, on Coinbase, right? So if we look at this, Crow, right? If we go in here and we type in CRO USD, who's on the list right there? Coinbase. Now, when Coinbase gets involved in anything, we see meteoric support in a rally higher. Uh, but now take this a step further. Right, we're talking crow in the 50 cent range. It's actually pulling a little bit back in the 48 cent range. But let's bring this akin to something else that we've seen historically, like BNB, right? Binance. Let's go way, way back in Binance and look back at what happened when they were accepted into the US. Now, when Binance launched in the US with their exchange and everything else, the I mean, it's absurd how much they grew. I mean, we're talking a low down to $6.40 and a rally all the way to a high of almost 700 Now, the actual time slot that Binance was brought into the US was like November, December of 2020. So if we look at what happened, that was right around here. As we go into 2021, it was already rallying very aggressively, but we started seeing this meteoric growth where it just went absolutely crazy. And then it paused for a minute and then tripled up from there, right? Monstrous growth before finally going sideways for the better part of, well, February to April and then going up another 2x and then finally pulling all the way back. So although we're talking about a difference where we've got a low at $6.40 and an initial rally high of 353, comparatively on crypto.com, if we look at the low that took place over there, that was down at 5 cents. So if we compare that, a move up to the $20 range is very realistic. You'll notice all of my markings on here. This was since we launched the dollar a day crypto.com strategy, uh, the uh, buying crow coins. It's It's been 61 days and there's 280 total coins. It's up about like 200 something percent since that video. Um, but again, the concept here is that we see meteoric growth and it's right around the corner. If crypto.com and their exchanges move into the US and they begin accepting that, what's to stop this from going 50 cents all the way up to $20? This is a huge one that I've been paying attention to for a while. We talked about it in a YouTube video 61 days ago. Uh, definitely one that I'm keeping my eyes on. Another major consideration is the gaming sector. As we go into crypto and people begin to turn their outfits and costumes and weapons and all of these other things within their game, into tradable NFTs that have a real life value, we're going to start seeing these gaming coins go absolutely mental. Right now, this is one of them, but this isn't certainly the only gala or gala or whatever you want to call it. G A L A uh, is a big one that offers what I like to call like farm sim uh, or, you know, the Facebook farming simulator version, uh, but in NFT format. Right. Gala, they, they also have a lot of other things that they're bringing to the table. But one of them that I actually played along with was that one. And it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it's also a lot easier to get into than some of these other platforms. Now, another one that we definitely need to take a look at when we're looking at it is Sandbox. Now, Sandbox has already been going absolutely crazy. It's gone from like the sub dollar range all the way up into the $4 mark. Is it too late to get into Sand? Possibly, right? I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback from where it is now. I don't wanna buy it $4.12. The last POC balance point was at $2.70. It might make a little bit more sense on a pullback like that. Uh, another one would be Wax P USDT, similar in that mindset where we've got a really strong attempted mo motive to the upside. They're trying to break above the dollar mark. Maybe this is another one of those like we just saw uh, on Sandbox where they get that break above the dollar mark and they go absolutely crazy.
and then we see a rally all the way up to the four dollar mark what i mean regardless of which one we're looking at the gaming side of things has huge potential to the upside sandbox feels like it might be a little bit overdone to the upside where it is now i'd prefer a pullback compared to some of the others but there's a lot of potential on the table here for these gaming ones a few others in that sector, YGG is another one of interest for a continuation phase to the upside. This is very, very early on, uh, but with a continuation move to the upside, trying to break above into the tens, if we basically add a zero to the last one, what's to stop this from going to 50 or 60? You can see how this can go just as crazy. It's just a little bit more expensive, unfortunately. Um, and then along with that, we also have Decentraland, good old mana, USDT, which again, arguably has already had an incredibly explosive rally to the upside. It would be a lot nicer to get a pullback on mana if possible. Um, the last balance point that we've got, yeah, it's going to be way down here, sub $1. We might not necessarily get that. It seems like a lot of the support's building up in the $2.46 range. One thing is for sure, though, the gaming side of things is seeing some massive growth right now. And so is DeFi, obviously, as, uh, as more and more people catch on to it. All right, folks, well, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining, something to keep in your tool belt. Bitcoin and a lot of the other coins, they've got some really, really good potential and something that I want to shine a light on that, you know, something other than Bitcoin. Bitcoin, in fact, looks like it's ready to pull back a little bit further, while some of these other coins may have those opportunities just waiting. Now, if you want to hang out with me longer, even beyond the YouTube crew times, if you want to see some trades during the morning session and see how we approach the New York Stock Exchange, scalping the, the NASDAQ and the S&P and all of those, then check out VIP membership and you can get into our members-only trade room, and that way you can see the trades actually happen instead of the recordings at the end of the day. Either way, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or shoot us a message one way or another. I would love to hear from you. Outside of that, though, I hope you have a fantastic day. Have an awesome one. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next.